Bridge installation is a complex and precise engineering task that involves lifting and placing heavy structural components. In this project, the installation focused on placing massive concrete beams of varying weights, each requiring specific lifting strategies and equipment. Two sets of hydraulic cranes were used to achieve this, larger cranes for heavier beams and smaller cranes for moderately heavy beams. For the installation of 200-ton concrete beams, the project utilized a combination of 500-ton and 400-ton hydraulic cranes. These powerful cranes worked in tandem to lift, maneuver, and position these heavy beams onto the bridge structure. Hydraulic cranes are preferred in such heavy lifting due to their reliability, strength, and precision in movement. The synchronized operation between the 500-ton and 400-ton cranes ensured that the beams were lifted steadily and without undue stress or tilting, minimizing the risk of damage to both the beams and the bridge structure. For lighter yet substantial 80-ton concrete beams, two 250-ton hydraulic cranes were employed. While these beams were lighter compared to the 200-ton beams, their weight still required careful handling to ensure stability during the lift and placement. The use of two cranes provided a balanced lift, distributing the load evenly and allowing for smooth and controlled placement of the beams. This technique prevents the beam from bending or cracking under its own weight, which can be a risk in improperly handled lifts. The use of hydraulic cranes in bridge construction provides several advantages, including the ability to operate in tight spaces and adjust lifting angles and positions with precision. Safety protocols are crucial in such operations, given the massive weights involved, and proper planning, training, and synchronization of the crane operators are key to a successful installation. Setting bridge beams over a railroad requires a carefully coordinated operation, particularly when dealing with heavy concrete beams and high-capacity cranes. Typically, these projects use 175-ton and 100-ton cranes, reflecting the immense weight and size of the beams to be lifted and placed accurately over rail tracks. This demanding task combines the disciplines of engineering, logistics, and safety planning to minimize disruptions and ensure the stability of both the bridge and the railway. The installation of bridge beams over a railroad involves pre-planning. First, the engineering team assesses the project requirements, accounting for the size, length, and weight of the beams. Beam weights in such projects can range from 20 tons to over 100 tons depending on the span and design of the bridge. To handle these loads, the team typically chooses cranes with capacities of 100 tons or 175 tons. These cranes are selected based on the lifting requirements, outreach, and site constraints, such as the proximity to the railway tracks and available space for setup. An additional consideration is the dynamic nature of a railroad environment, where continuous rail traffic needs to be accommodated. Thus, beam placement often occurs during designated track possession windows, scheduled in collaboration with railway authorities to minimize disruptions to train operations. For some projects, night shifts are common to take advantage of lower rail traffic hours, providing a safer and less disruptive environment for crane operation. The choice of cranes with lifting capacities of 175 and 100 tons stems from the weight and reach needed to place the concrete beams accurately. The 175-ton crane typically serves as the main lifting force, as it is capable of managing heavier loads and longer spans, often necessary for larger bridges or complex multi-beam arrangements. The 100-ton crane is employed for handling smaller beams or supporting tasks like moving other materials and positioning equipment. Both cranes must be precisely positioned on either side of the railway to facilitate a synchronized lift, reducing the risk of swinging beams or collisions. Given the sensitivity of the setting, crane operators work closely with ground crews to ensure the beams are moved safely and slowly into place. Cranes must be stabilized using outriggers and ballast weights to prevent tipping during the lifts. Concrete beams, especially those of pre-stressed or post-tension designs, are manufactured off-site and transported to the project location. Depending on their size, these beams are lifted using slings and spreader bars to evenly distribute the load and prevent structural damage. Prior to the actual lift, a series of dry runs or test lifts are often performed to ensure the alignment and coordination of the cranes. During the beam setting process, the cranes lift the beam in a synchronized manner, carefully adjusting their positions to ensure the beam remains stable. The crew ensures precise alignment over the bearing pads or girders where the beam will rest. Once in place, beams are secured using temporary fasteners until the final connections are made. Depending on the bridge design, this could involve additional post-tensioning or the installation of diaphragms between beams for stability.
Safety is a top priority throughout the entire beam setting operation. Each lift is planned to the smallest detail, with contingency plans in place for unexpected issues like equipment malfunctions or changing weather conditions. The proximity to active rail tracks adds an extra layer of caution, as unauthorized personnel must be kept clear of the work zone at all times. Additionally, each crane lift is carefully calculated to stay within the equipment's rated capacities, avoiding overloading that could lead to catastrophic failure. Communication between crane operators and ground crews is crucial, using radio signals or visual indicators to coordinate every step of the lift. The construction of the viaduct over the Ferreira River in Gunton, Lugo, stands as a remarkable engineering feat due to its design and execution. This viaduct, classified as a hyperstatic structure, features five spans measuring 45606060645 meters each. Designed as a dual carriageway, the viaduct reaches a maximum height of 60 meters, ensuring a stable and efficient transport link in the region. The viaduct is characterized by its hyperstatic structure, which means it has more supports than strictly necessary for stability. This design provides increased rigidity and stability, distributing loads efficiently and reducing deformation under varying forces. The five-span arrangement, with varying lengths of 45 to 60 meters, creates a balanced structure that caters to both functional and aesthetic requirements. The dual carriageway layout allows for smoother traffic flow, accommodating two-way travel while maintaining safety and reducing congestion. The construction technique for this viaduct involved the use of a beam launcher, a special piece of equipment that facilitates the installation of large and heavy beams without needing extensive scaffolding or intermediate supports. Beam launchers are crucial for building over rivers, valleys, or other obstacles, as they can place beams precisely and safely, minimum environmental disruption. In the case of the Ferreira River Viaduct, the launcher placed the pre-assembled beams onto the piers one span at a time. This method ensured the structural integrity of the beams and allowed for controlled and safe assembly. The launcher helped overcome the logistical challenges posed by the river and the 60-meter height, reducing the need for auxiliary structures like temporary towers or cranes. It also expedited the construction timeline while maintaining quality standards. The viaduct over the Ferreira River is a critical infrastructure project, enhancing road connectivity in the region of Lugo. It plays a vital role in improving transportation efficiency, reducing travel times, and providing a safer route over the river. Moreover, the viaduct's design reflects a combination of technical precision and environmental awareness, incorporating advanced construction techniques to minimize its impact on the surrounding landscape and the river below. The construction of a bridge over the TIY River is a key component of the new Eastern Highway project. This bridge, which spans 160 meters with dual lanes, is engineered to handle heavy traffic loads and features both concrete and steel components. The entire project is a result of meticulous planning, cutting-edge construction technology, and strict safety protocols. This document outlines the detailed step-by-step -step process for the bridge's construction, focusing on the installation of full web steel girders for the central span. The bridge over the TIY River consists of a central span made from steel girders, measuring 60 meters in length, and two adjacent sections composed of 25-meter-long pre-stressed concrete girders. The design reflects the modern engineering principle of combining materials to optimize strength and durability while ensuring a long lifespan for the structure. The steel girders used in the central section are grade 50 steel, meeting A709 standards. This type of steel offers high corrosion resistance, giving it a shiny or copper-like appearance. This protective layer, while appearing pre-corroded, actually helps reduce the risk of long-term corrosion. The main focus of the construction process is to place the steel girders accurately within the central section of the bridge. Due to their weight and size, each girder weighs around 50 tons and measures 60 meters in length. Advanced techniques and specialized equipment are essential for a safe and successful installation. Assembling the girders on tracks. The steel girders are initially assembled on-site on specially designed tracks. These tracks allow the girders to be moved horizontally and 
and provide stability throughout the process. The assembly takes place on an existing part of the bridge, using the access spans as the base for operations. Extending the girders with a launch nose. A launch nose is welded onto each girder. This extension is a lightweight structural component that lengthens the girder to ensure smooth placement across the span without tipping. It acts as a counterbalance to distribute weight effectively during the launch, preventing the girder from toppling into the river. Sliding the girders into position. Once the girders are fully assembled and extended, they are slid into their final position over the bridge. The launch mechanism uses rollers with a very low friction coefficient, around 5%, to reduce the effort needed to move the girders. A high-capacity machine initiates the movement, slowly sliding each girder approximately 100 meters. The weight of each pair of girders being slid simultaneously is equivalent to the combined weight of over 100 cars. This technique ensures that the girders are not stressed or misaligned during the move. Ensuring structural stability with paired movement, the steel girders are slender, measuring 60 meters in length and 3 meters in height. To avoid the risk of lateral buckling, a phenomenon known as lateral torsional buckling, two girders are moved in tandem. This dual girder approach provides the necessary structural stability to prevent bending or twisting under their own weight during the movement. The precision of the entire operation is ensured by employing advanced monitoring systems and equipment. Aluminum jacks with large lifting capacities are used to make vertical and horizontal adjustments during the launch process. These lightweight jacks are easy to manipulate and allow fine-tuning of the girders' positions to align them accurately. High-precision topographic monitoring systems are used to track the girders' position and deformation in real time. This allows engineers to compare actual measurements against numerical predictions and make necessary adjustments to keep the construction process on track. To prevent the girders from drifting during the lowering phase, lateral stoppers are installed to guide the structure as it is lowered into place. This ensures that the girders descend vertically without any deviation, maintaining the integrity of the bridge. Once the sliding process is complete, the girders are positioned approximately 3 meters above their final elevation. A system of ears or protrusions on the girders allows large capacity jacks to be attached. These jacks gradually lower the girders to their final position. Position. This careful descent aligns the steel girders precisely with the rest of the structure, ensuring that the final composite section will function effectively. After the girders are in their final position, a concrete slab is poured over them to create a composite section. The El Rosario Ravine Bridge is a key infrastructure project on the Pan American Highway North in Carqui Province, Ecuador. This bridge crosses the challenging terrain of the El Rosario Ravine, marking a significant milestone in improving regional connectivity and transportation efficiency. One of the most remarkable aspects of this bridge is 65-meter-long beams, each weighing a substantial 120 tons. This installation process is an intricate and highly technical task, requiring meticulous planning and precision to ensure the structural integrity and safety of the bridge. The Noroccidental Technical Department is responsible for the engineering and execution of this ambitious project, overseeing all phases of construction and coordinating the extensive logistical and technical requirements. The placement of such massive beams in the ravine involves not only technical expertise, but also highly specialized equipment and methods to maintain balance, stability, and alignment throughout the installation process. The unique challenges posed by the ravine's topography demanded innovative solutions and precise engineering calculations, as any error could result in delays, damage, or even catastrophic failure. Given the scale and complexity of the project, engineers employed advanced construction techniques and rigorous safety measures. The bridge is part of broader efforts to enhance the Pan American Highway North, which serves as a major transportation artery in the region, facilitating trade, commerce, and travel between Ecuador and neighboring countries. The successful installation of these beams is a testament to the Noroccidental Technical Department's engineering capabilities and commitment to excellence. 
This project is not only an engineering feat but also a strategic investment in infrastructure development. The El Rosario Ravine Bridge aims to improve road safety and reduce travel times, providing a more reliable and efficient route for vehicles and contributing to regional economic growth. It stands as a symbol of progress in the Kharki province and reflects the country's commitment to developing its transportation network in alignment with modern engineering standards. Originally, the Suyungong Bridge was designed in 2014 using the PCT, precast concrete technology composite girder method. However, this design faced significant scrutiny after several incidents of collapse and accidents at other construction sites employing the same method. Consequently, the Korea Expressway Corporation and KCC initiated a search for a more reliable construction technique suitable for an 80-meter long span bridge. Faced with a tight construction timeline and the need for a robust method, the team sought alternatives that would not compromise structural integrity. This led to the adoption of the SBARC method, which offered superior design features for long span bridges. In July 2016, Haidong Bridge Company was officially appointed as the designer, and the construction site was opened shortly thereafter. Under the SBARC method, Haidong Bridge Company successfully completed preliminary assembly for nine spans within three months, showcasing their expertise and the method's efficiency. While the original construction timeline was extended due to necessary support for pier installation, the team made structural adjustments that reduced the overall construction time by three months. This timely completion was crucial, especially given the pressure on KCC, which was facing potential losses had it continued with the PCT method. By transitioning to the SBARC technique, KCC not only improved the project timeline but also significantly reduced costs. This method allowed for profit generation through shorter construction periods and lower material requirements, showcasing the economic advantages of adopting innovative construction technologies. The SBARC construction process emphasizes high standards for material quality. The steel plates used in the composite girders comply with Korean industrial standards and the internal quality management specifications of Haidong Bridge Co. These plates undergo rigorous quality control and are precisely cut using advanced computerized techniques, ensuring accuracy in fabrication. After cutting, the steel plates are welded together to prevent deformation of the flange and web components. This stage involves skilled technicians who have demonstrated proficiency in welding techniques. Each assembly is conducted with meticulous attention to detail, aligning components based on precise blueprints. This careful approach ensures that the girders maintain their structural integrity throughout the construction process. The assembly process is divided into two stages, minor and major assemblies. After the components are assembled, a trial assembly is performed to verify that everything fits correctly before the blocks are stored at the construction yard. The SBARC method's design significantly reduces the overall weight of the girders, allowing for a more streamlined installation process. For instance, these girders are approximately 30% lighter than traditional box girders, which facilitates the use of a single crane for the installation of spans up to 80 meters long without the need for additional support structures. This this innovative approach not only enhances efficiency but also minimizes disruption at the construction site. Once the girders are positioned correctly, pre-cast panels are installed within the SBARC composite girders. Concrete is poured up to pre-installed stoppers, and finishing work is carried out meticulously to ensure quality. This phase includes the application of paint and protective coatings, selected based on national standards, ensuring durability and aesthetic appeal. Throughout the entire construction process, quality control measures are strictly enforced. This includes a final inspection by supervisors, ensuring that all components meet the necessary safety and quality standards before they are transported to the construction site. The the loading process also considers protection against surface damage, utilizing rubber bands and supports to secure the components during transit.